It is Monday, October 1st, 2012, and we are still dealing with Tropical Storm Nadine situated to the southwest of the Azores Islands, and it does look as though Nadine will be passing through the island chain within the next few days as a storm that is starting to become extra tropical. Nevertheless, tropical storm force winds are to be expected. We also have a new tropical disturbance located to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands, and the Hurricane Center is giving this feature a 40% chance of tropical development. First off, this is the latest on Tropical Storm Nadine. Maximum sustained winds are 65 miles per hour, and the storm is currently moving toward the south at only 5 miles per hour, but a gradual turn back toward the northeast toward the Azores is expected, and the center of circulation is expected to cross through the island sometime early during the day on Thursday, and wind gusts in excess of 50 to 60 miles per hour are very possible. Thankfully, Nadine will no longer be a hurricane as it comes through the islands, so this is not going to be an overly significant event. If you just go ahead and pick up any loose items that you may have around your home, say in your backyard or your front yard, you should be in good shape, and you should come away from this storm with little to no damage. As we turn to the coast of Africa, you can see the tropical disturbance that the Hurricane Center has analyzed just to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands, but this is not the most well-established tropical disturbance as we do have southwest vertical wind shear causing convection to be displaced well away to the northeast of the primary low-level vorticity maximum. And on the water vapor, you get the idea that there is a lot of troughing that is present across the central Atlantic. So anything that does develop would probably max out as nothing more than a tropical depression or tropical storm. And this same troughing should also allow the storm to take a turn toward the north and away from the Caribbean or United States. So this new disturbance is no threat to our main interests out there across the Caribbean or the U.S. East Coast. As we work our way westward, we can see that there's a cold front sweeping through the Florida Panhandle, and this is helping to usher in more stable weather out across the Gulf of Mexico, and we're also going to see slightly cooler temperatures behind this cold front, and with each and every frontal passage, that's going to help to steadily cool down the Gulf of Mexico and make it less and less favorable for any tropical cyclone development as we head deeper into the hurricane season. As we work our way into the Western Caribbean, there is a lot of disorganized convection, and some of this activity is working its way toward the Florida Peninsula, and that's going to help enhance the rainfall as that front comes through. And some of this shower activity is already ongoing, and it looks as though it's going to be a rather rainy period for much of Florida throughout the remainder of the work week. Otherwise, the upper level environment is not favorable for any additional tropical cyclogenesis across the western half of the Atlantic Basin. We've got a long wave trough out across much of the southeast, and we have another upper level low near Honduras and Belize, so no development is expected in the West Caribbean. The six day forecast from the Canadian CMC model shows tropical storm Nadine starting to lift its way toward the northeast and becoming absorbed by a non tropical trough. We also see potential development from that disturbance in the Atlantic, but it quickly gets shunted to the northeast by the very same trough that is picking up Tropical Storm Nadine, and the rest of the tropics in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific are forecast to remain generally calm for the next 144 hours. The 6-7 to seven day forecast from the GFS model is calling for similar conditions out across the tropics. The only difference may be that the GFS is trying to develop a tropical cyclone off the coast of Mexico over the next 168 hours, and by day 7 you can see it lurking just to the south of Cabo San Lucas, but there are no other models showing development in the eastern Pacific at this time, so no development is expected for the time being. And finally, this is the latest 7-day forecast from the ECMWF model. By 48 and 72 hours, we do potentially have a tropical depression forming to the west of the Cape Verde Islands but we have significant long wave troughing out across much of the central and northeast Atlantic and as we saw with the CMC and GFS models this trough will be strong enough to pull both Nadine and this potential storm developing to the south away from land or at least away from the Caribbean and United States while the remainder of the Atlantic Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico remain quiet throughout the remainder of the forecast period. So thank you for continuing to make 28storms.com along with the Hurricane Tracker app one of your top sources for hurricane information. We will continue to keep a close watch on the tropics throughout the remainder of the season in the event that something were to form close to land. And also you can follow us throughout the year here at 28 Storms as we cover not only tropical cyclones but also severe weather across the United States. So thank you again and have a good Monday.